the water ball working so well. <laughs> well, it's significant because think about this. Would you try this in other situations and, and places? And that's why context matters, right? Because would you do this while you're sitting around the family dinner table and you want your kids to stop talking or yapping on their phones? Would you do this in, in your place of worship? Would you do this when you're in a movie theater and someone starts talking behind you? <laughs> they make it would work, man. <laughs> Just context matters. So, does anyone want to share some of the conversations you've had around these three questions? What are your thoughts? What are the ways you know you're welcome or not welcome because of an identity? Or relationships? Or how your diagram affects the work that you do here at Kennedy? Um, I, I, as being a, a, a woman, um, a, a white woman, but being a woman, um, particularly, uh, I think I am I, get, I can do my job, I'm seen as doing my job easier or better in an elementary school setting um, because it's largely female, it's a, traditionally a place where women are um, welcomed and successful. Um, and the converse of that for number three is as I have um, worked on getting my superintendent license and I am in rooms of mostly white men, older white men, um, I will also, when I walk in the room I'll usually get the you know, the eye scan up and down, and so... Of course. He <laughs> 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 okay, also came over and edited my identity sheet, too. <laughs> but, but that was, you know, it, it, it's a very, um, it's, it's a very uh, both subtle and obvious reminder of um, what being a woman means um, in, a, in a male, uh, a white male um, power structure. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions? Yes, please. Um, well, I didn't, uh, at one time, I didn't get a job that I had had before and left because I had a baby and what needed to stay home for a while. Um, the job came up again, and when I applied for it and didn't get it, I was told I didn't get it because of my choice that I had made before to leave to stay home and raise my daughter. So I felt like, you know, at that time, you know, they wanted to, it wouldn't have happened to my husband, I didn't think. <laughs> so, um, and actually in the interview, they told me, um, or they asked me, um, well, how is being a mother going to affect your um, working full time? So I felt know. like, yeah, yeah, that, you know, sort of diminished my relationship with the school. <laughs> Kind of school, LSU. <laughs> so, and, and, yeah. gotcha. yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good example. Anyone else for any of these questions? I feel a little bit like I have one for one. Okay. Um, and that would be that I'm organized. Um, as you all know, I like to have things neat and tidy and know where everything's at all, all the time. And it brings me back to my college days where. Everybody would want to be on my in my group for a group project because they knew that I would get it done and would ace it, and they wouldn't really have to do anything. So if they lacked on their part, I would just automatically jump in and do it and finish it for them because I didn't want that lack of their participation to reflect on my grade. Sure. So I just automatically stepped up and I just did it. And so going above and beyond like that can be a good thing, but it also can be a negative thing because then people just automatically rely on you to do their job for mm -hmm. other items. You know, like the college example. Mark, sure. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Anyone else? Yes, please. Um, this, uh, it's been an interesting kind of journey with me working with uh, Somali students and the learning that I had from that about them and their culture. And then in 
going on to church because I'm a simple Minnesota white person born and raised here and some folks have some pretty conservative views about immigration and things and I even though I don't I can't always get my family, my extended family, my brother and my dad necessarily to kind of switch their thinking. They they have become when I share observations about students at school, smaller students versus white students. Very positive contrast for smaller students. Like they're really excited to learn that. We should see them sitting in the Yale classroom and learn English words. Or um, at conference time, there's more Somali parents in the school than white parents. They'll listen to me and not make a comment one way or the other. So it feels like they're accepting of the learning I have instead of saying something negative about it. And I've got a certain group of friends that will also allow me to say things and not comment in a negative way. I don't know if I help them change their thinking, but they'll listen to what I have to say, which to me feels good. Um, so I go back to the first one is um, as a white middle class Christian female, I get to come to work every day and not have to worry about my negatives. So I get to enter into a, uh, I work in a school so everything operates, I get days off for, to celebrate my holidays when I want and um, I'm middle class so I'm not worrying about where my food's coming from, where I'm staying. And I'm white in a predominantly white community, and I don't have to worry about people judging me based on what I look like. Mm -hmm. I'm new as a classroom teacher. Um, before that, I did outdoor education and natural resources. And my friends in that world, um, when I told them about this job and how, uh, how it's going on, oh, nice. they, they look at me and say, what do you wear to work? Because we're used to my boots and car hearts and, uh, and that sort of stuff. And so just subtle, but um, there was, yeah, there was one person who literally said, what did you wear for your interview? Like, really? <laughs> you act, are you actually wondering that? Or is it just because of this time? Anyone else? So what about your students? We can talk about you. As a matter of fact, we will talk about you just a little bit more. Um, think about this exercise again. Depending on how serious you took it, how seriously you took it, and how honest you were in your responses, think about some of the things that you probably had to remember, not necessarily learn about yourself, but remember about yourself. And think about the context in which those matter. But then, hopefully, in having conversations with your coworkers, you got to learn a little bit about them. So by looking, you wouldn't think that there's a sense of humor that's not appreciated, or a particular style of dress that's not appreciated, or that you didn't get a job because of motherhood or your gender. All of that stuff matters. And that matters for you because I believe that professional development is also personal development. I think we come to our work differently when we are really passionate about it. So I'm gonna turn it over to Eric now with these questions. Let's see if this works. Can I try? Arrow. Yes. It really doesn't do that. You're just investing with it. All right. Here we go. There we go. It's actually problematic in some other ways too because we're asking to sort of try and see things through someone else's eyes, which is, is a difficult thing to do. Uh, it's also potentially dangerous in some ways because we don't really know what they're doing. But based on your experiences with your students, you realize that they too have to leave things behind. We're talking about identity in a, a legitimate, complete context. And your students are humans, just like you are. So they too have to leave things behind when they come to school. 
So that's the next question for us to start thinking about a little bit at our tables, is what identities do your students bring to class, and what identities do you think they have to leave at home in order to be successful in your classroom? So please, have a conversation with the table.